Hello, my name is Elle Washburn, Deputy Chief of the Bureau of Investigations for the San Jose Police Department, the lead law enforcement agency for the Silicon Valley Internet Crimes Against Children here in California. I am here to introduce you to Ms. Pauline Stewart, mother to Ryan Last, who became a victim to online sextortion. Sextortion is a threat made by an individual stating that they will expose the victim's explicit or nude video or photo with others unless the victim complies with their demands. Often, the perpetrator extorts the victim for money or more explicit videos or photos in return. Ms. Stewart is here to speak on how one photo changed her son's and her family's lives forever. My name is Pauline Stewart and I'm a mother of two teenage boys. I'm here to tell you about my son, Ryan. Ryan was a victim of sextortion. Sextortion happens when a person blackmails or threatens to distribute your private or explicit video, photos or videos. If you do not send more explicit photos or videos, money or engage in activities that may be sexual or illegal in nature. This individual may also threaten to harm your friends or family unless you comply with their demands. Unfortunately, Ryan ended up taking his life due to the extreme pressure that was put on him by the person demanding money and threatening to distribute explicit photos of him. My son Ryan was a senior at Ann Sobrato High School. He was a straight-A student who was planning on attending Washington State University and majoring in agricultural biotechnology. He loved the Future Farmers of America program and was their chapter secretary and raised his sheep for their supervised agriculture experience project. He was also a Boy Scout who was working on his Eagle Scout project. He combined his love for FFA and Boy Scouts with the plan to build a shed for the school farm for his Eagle Scout project. In his junior year of his high school, he fell in love with a theater program. He has been involved in building the sets for the school product productions. He was looking forward to starting college. He had just finished a tour of six Southern California colleges, which helped him decide on Washington State University. Ryan was a very trusting person. The individual who sextorted Ryan pretended to be a young girl interested in my son. They, in other words, catfished my son and gained his trust through flirting and showing interest. Ryan truly believed that he was talking to a young girl. This is one of the huge problems with social media. People can pretend to be anyone. The fact that he was told that they would send out or post the pictures on social media have a, had a devastating impact on Ryan. He chose to end his life rather than have the pictures distributed on social media. He believed his reputation would be destroyed and he was terrified of what his friends and family would think. I really want parents to understand that there are dangers with the online world our kids are involved in. My husband and I had parental controls on our kids' accounts. We knew their passwords and they could not download any apps without our approval. We thought with all of these precautions that nothing like this could happen to our family. We honestly never thought that this was possible when we created the parental controls. We were so very wrong. We want to make sure that this does not happen to another family. We want to make sure that parents are aware of the risks out there. We would also like them to talk to their kids so that kids feel that they can come to their parents if they make a mistake. Social media is the way that kids are getting targeted in these types of scams. I think that parents should go home and talk to their kids about a few things such as what apps they use and who they communicate with. I know that a lot of kids play online games against other people. One thing that I would like to stress is that if someone reaches out to them, and tries to befriend them, they need to be very careful. I always loved that Ryan trusted and believed in people. Unfortunately, this was a huge part of what made, him the, made Ryan the perfect target. 
I truly don't know how to create the correct balance between trusting and being skeptical. I know that parents need to talk to their children about what to do if someone they don't know reaches out to them. Ryan was my firstborn and an amazing and loving child. His loss has devastated our family. My younger son lost his brother, best friend, his innocence and trusting nature in one night. Ryan's younger brother has never been interested in getting on social media before this and has had to grow up way too fast. Ryan truly believed that his error in judgment of trusting someone was too much to handle. Please stress with your child that you love them and that if something like this happens, that your family can work it out. We want to get Ryan's story out there so that no other family has to go through what we have. We want to educate both parents and kids about the risks out there and especially about sending compromising pictures to people on the internet. The Silicon Valley Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force has learned that funding for the California ICAC program has not been renewed for the governor's proposed 2022-23 budget. This funding supports five ICAC task force teams within California, which are located in Sacramento, San Jose, Fresno, Los Angeles, and San Diego. If ICAC funding is not restored, the task force teams will have significant impacts to include the reduction of key personnel, as well as advanced forensic tools responsible for combating child exploitation and abuse. The increased reliance on the internet for everyone and for almost every aspect of our lives, coupled with the increased capability of being anonymous online, has allowed child sexual predator offenses and human trafficking to surge over the last several years. The problem continues to grow, even as law enforcement techniques and efforts increase to meet these historical challenges. Without funding, our abilities and resources to combat these heinous crimes will be overwhelmed. Continued funding will allow for improved training and advanced tools to assist the task force and affiliated agencies throughout California to combat child predators and keep up with the ever-changing digital environment. Funding is imperative to help ICAC personnel bring these abusers to justice. Without it, many children in California and throughout the world will undoubtedly suffer at the hands of violent child predators. The San Jose Police Department and the Silicon Valley Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, along with our allied agencies, appeal to the state of California and state government to restore the ICAC task force funding. We also ask that you, the community, contact your state representatives and tell them you believe this funding is paramount to your community safety and the safety of our children. Thank you.